heart of Leith. Scotland's ancient link with the seaports of Europe has grown steadily since its first enclosed dock was built at the beginning of the 19th century. Today, the water area of the port consists of six enclosed docks, an inner and an outer harbour, and the new western harbour where the great milling concern of Messrs. Joseph Rank has cooperated with the commissioners in the provision of new deep water quays and berths for its Caledonia flour mills. The installations and facilities are continually being improved and there is a steady increase both in the number and size of the ships using the port and in the volume of exports and imports. Properly, the history of the port's renaissance goes back to 1838 when the Leith Dock Commission was formed and the docks were separated from the municipality of Edinburgh. The bell of SS Berlin recalls the opening of the Edinburgh Dock. This steamer, with HRH, the Duke of Edinburgh, on board, opened the Edinburgh Dock Leith on 26 July 1881. Leith has indeed lived up to its motto, persevere. It seems a far cry from that day some 16 years before the commissioners took over when Leith received its last visit from a reigning monarch, George IV. The occasion, we read, was marred by the most inclement weather. This seems to have been the lot of visiting royalty, for it was so for Queen Victoria and for Mary, Queen of Scots, who landed at Leith on the 19th of August, 1561. On the 19th of August, 1956, Leith welcomed another queen, Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II. As the morning light falls on the Fife Hills and the Firth of Forth, the Britannia slowly makes her way into the Western Harbour. Her Majesty is arriving to open Edinburgh's 10th festival of music and drama. Returning from her tour of the Western Isles with the Queen are the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Charles and Princess Anne, Princess Margaret and Princess Andrew of Greece. On the quayside, the commissioners for the harbour and docks of Leith have already assembled to await the arrival of the royal yacht. Her band playing, her flags moving lazily in the sunshine, Britannia draws alongside. are made fast and with perfect timing a long string of bunting rises into the light breeze. Astern, the frigate escort HMS Orwell glides to her berth at the Caledonia Mills. swung into position. Executives of Messrs. Joseph Rank have a word with Mr. E. W. Burness, chairman of the Dock Commission. And whom have we here? Yes, it is Princess Anne and the Duke of Cornwall, watching the arrival of a detachment of the High Constables of Leith, preceding the Lord Provost of Edinburgh, Sir John Banks. Sir John and his lady, accompanied by Mr. Burness and Mr. Proudfoot, General Manager and Secretary of the Commission, go aboard to welcome the Queen to Scotland's capital. Lord Provost that despite the broken weather of this unfortunate summer, 
she had thoroughly enjoyed her visit to the Hebrides. The Lord Provost, accompanied by the detachment of the High Constables, leaves to await Her Majesty's arrival at St. Giles Cathedral. To the strains of Scotland the Brave, headed by their pipes and drums and accompanied by their colour, the Guard of Honour provided by the 7th, 9th Royal Scots takes up its position. the High Constables, this time in full force. Although you'd hardly believe it from their uniform, they can still be called out to help to quell riots and to attend dangerous fires. Their real job, however, is to guard the person of the Chairman of the Commission, who now accompanies the party, to be presented to the Queen. The service chiefs, Mrs. Burness, Mr. and Mrs. Proudfoot, Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Rank, and Mr. Macmillan, moderator of the High Constables, and Mrs. Macmillan. Prompt to the minute comes the royal party. A stiffish breeze has risen and the Queen has some difficulty in controlling the collar of her coat. There is a happy smile for six-year-old Edwina Burness, who gets through the business of presenting her bouquet with admirable coolness. Service chiefs are presented. Vice Admiral Cuthbert, Flag Officer Scotland, Lieutenant General Sir Horatius Murray, GOC Scottish Command, Air Vice Marshal Craycroft, Senior Air Officer Scotland, and the Chief Constable, Edinburgh City Police. The Duke of Edinburgh looks particularly well after his week in the island.
From earliest times, Leith has figured prominently in the pages of Scottish history, the way of entry and departure of kings and queens. Today, it is flags and a happy welcome from everyone. Less fortunate was the queen who landed on the same day in August, 395 years ago, to a country riven in two, with no arrangements made for her arrival and no carriage to take her to Edinburgh. It all takes place now in an atmosphere of efficiency and without fuss. And Her Majesty leaves on the minute for a festive city and the opening ceremony at St. Giles Cathedral. A different world in many ways, yet with some things not greatly changed. 